tuned into the true frequency. Your protection from, 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 from deception. This is Truth Frequency Radio. When you finally boil it all down, magic is imagination. We, we, we are moving into an age of manifestation. Things become actually less material, more ethereal. The, the, the golden dawn is when we awaken to this new, new, new station of life. What you think becomes real quicker. Regain our imagination, regain our inner child, and let that inner child out, 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 out. My name is Frank Castle, founding member of the music group Ice Click and New York City Neo Shaman. After a serious injury sidelined my career in 2013, I decided to set out on an adventure to search for myself with the help of the plant medicine Ayahuasca. What I discovered waiting for me was something I could have never prepared for. It was time for me to become something more, someone more. It was time I became fearless. What is up, everyone? It is. It's me, <laughs> Frank Castle, your host. Your Sorcerer Supreme of Saturday nights here on TruthFrequencyRadio.com. And I'm here with my etherical translator and best friend, Paula Milo. <laughs> hey, everyone. Now, we have a special guest tonight uh, on the show. I like having... I like bringing, bringing a new guest on the show because it's like we're introducing more family. You know, internally, I say to myself, it's more proof. <laughs> I go, no, it's more proof. People, more people know. Now they're going to hear from more people. More people will know about more people having more people stuff done in the spiritual right. realm. Gina, how are you? I'm good, Frank. How are you? Uh, I'm really good. Now, you have, a, you have a show. Yes. When is your show? And My- you got to say it right into the... All right. Um, my show is at 7 p.m. on Fridays on NAPPN TV. And what do you talk about on the show? Well, it's called The Other World. So we talk about all kinds of stuff lately. It's taken turns for um, everything from crystals to aliens. Aliens. That's awesome. <laughs> that sounds ridiculously awesome. And right up our alley. <laughs> Absolutely. Have you had much contact with, with beings? Uh, quite a lot of contact. Okay, awesome. So then you're the perfect person for the job. <laughs> but before we say another word, we have to stop. Shout outs to Chris and Cherie. Love you guys so much. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be doing any of this stuff. At least not as a team now. Now there's a team. Now, see, now there's just, it's a family now. That developed from Chris going, no, you got to stay here at my place when you're in Denver. <laughs> We're going to smoke DMT. I'm like, no, get out of here. And that's where all that started. And this is where we're at right now. Remember, wherever you are, make a TFR. You know what else I love about Truth Frequency Radio? What, Frank? <laughs> I love that you can, <laughs> you can get the app on your phone. Can you? Yes, you can. And you can take that app, you open it, you wait your 30 seconds, it takes a minute sometimes, and then instant exactly what you want. And you could sign up and you can listen to all the past shows. Yep, you, you can, can see get the, a subscription. You can see um, the first third of the shows on YouTube at Frank Castle's Fearless on YouTube. We did name the page. Thank you, everyone who subscribed. And I love everyone in the chat room and any everyone out there that's part of the fearless family the conversations that i've been having lately are just completely off the deep end awesome so much to discuss but we have such a small time amount of time in the hour so do we have a new moon coming up isn't it monday i think what the moon that's coming up is a, like a new moon well we just had a full moon so now the moon is it's like the fresh waning. new stuff so it's going away. Yes. All right, cool. So the new moon mantra. 
I'm restored by sacred cosmic vibration. I am divinely protected. I relinquish the weight of that which no longer serves me. My spirit is awake. My path is revealed. I am open to receive. That's CherokeeBill.com. You, you know, let's talk about mantras for a second. The, the word, saying the physical word, right, and putting it out into the 3D, it, what, it, what does that do? It's actually doing something. You're not just talking hot air. It's making a spell. So it's magic. Right. Yeah. It's setting intention and putting it out into the universe. So magic is real. Yes. Okay, well, these are just the things I like to go over quick. Hit keynote points so everyone remembers. This is real. We're not even playing a game up in here. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I can't. <laughs> Your protection from deception has arrived. Before we go any further, because this is going to get absolutely insane, this is the story of my journey and my journey alone. And Gina's and Paula's. <laughs> I don't suggest you try this at home alone. That is, unless you're ready. Then by all means proceed. But first, we suggest you finding a reputable shaman who knows what he or she is doing and travel safe in the love and the light. Remember, the universe rewards bravery. Blast off. <laughs> we all ready for take. So mantras, saying the physical word or speaking out loud actually is casting a spell into the environment, into yes. the space that you're in. Yes. The people find that really difficult to believe. This is true. Well, look what, how the atmosphere changes when you say, I hate something versus I love something. There right. you go. That's, that's it instantly it turns like confrontational. Absolutely. If you say it to someone else, especially. Agreed. Absolutely. And if you kind of change the environment, the open arms and say, I love you. Or you look in the mirror, I love you, I love myself, it changes everything. That's right. That word love is very powerful. Why is that love so, that word so powerful? Well, we had a, uh, didn't you have uh, someone write into us this morning? Yes. About their experience? Yes. Do you want to just go quickly through it? Yeah, I don't want to read it because I didn't get permission, but I will just say um, the person ran into a reptilian mm -hmm. under a, a low dose of DMT and it wanted him to do something and he was able to just send love, send love at it, at it and laugh and laughter and love gave it no power. Right. So, you know, what we're talking about on the show is working. It's working for people. We're giving you, um, some of the, uh, like the, the guidelines, just, you know, basic stuff, a little roadmap, perhaps you go out and do it your way, but just use this as a guide. But it works. But it does work. And to add to Gina's point, the reason throwing love at a situation like that works is because it was the one it's the one true emotion, love. And everything else is the opposite or the lack of love or trying to get back to the state of love. So this person was very smart. And used his head very quickly to throw love at this entity that was scaring him. Or so at least he be getting right in his face. Exactly. And he diffused the situation. It's the laughing. Yeah, the, the by sound using of like love. being joy, like yes. that dissipates that. And joy it, is the fastest thing to dissipate any negativity. Now, and they ring it a different vibration. Exactly. This is what I was going to say now. The mantra is a similar thing to the vibration that comes out of perhaps laughter. Right. And uh, it changes the, the atmosphere around you by doing this. Mm -hmm. So by sh sending love at a, a predator, it has no there's no fear attachment to you. Right. Because you're sending love at it. So you're not afraid. You're just like, look, man, here's love. Here's so much love. You're not even going to know what to do with it. And they, there's nothing to feed off of on you. No. There's no connection. No, because it's breaking the association. Because that's, <clears throat> that's that, not what it feeds on either. Like a negative exactly. is going to feed on negative energy anyway. So it's not going to be interested or want to be around anything that's positive and full of joy. Unless it specifically, you know, is trying to attack and hurt that. And then you better have other defenses. Right, right. <laughs> absolutely. And boy, do they come knocking when you're at the lowest point, don't they? Right. Those, those wonderful beings, but you have to be careful out there, um, where your mental is in terms of like, 
Like a lot of people say to me, I want to smoke with you guys, or I want to do this with you guys, but I'm afraid of the demons. And I go, why, why are you concentrating so much on the demon? What's the problem here? There's not enough love and hugs that you're so worried and scared about. Like demonic entities are just a tiny fraction of anything that you'll find out there. It's like a less than a percentage of a percent. Like, you know, there's so much other stuff. Yeah. Everything I, I think is with there. Aya, though, that's like people's, you know, the people that are going to say that they're the ones that can't face their their own. I mean, it's the, really their own demons reflected. So. Yeah, well, I'm not going to see your demon. Yeah, while I'm under. you know, so it's like it's really themselves that they are afraid of facing more than any demon. Like they right. are the demon. Right. You know, I've seen real. De- the, I've seen a real demon. And it's like, uh, you know, external, truth, right? not an internal thing. You know, when when you're going under, it's, you know. It's internal. You're going to share that experience if you're at the level where you're able to say, okay, we're going to meet over here at this point, you know, but other than that, you're in your own journey until you get to there. Gene is very deep into the pool. (laughs) I'm letting you guys know right now. just so everyone understands because the last two episodes we spoke, actually the last couple episodes, it's four now. um, We discussed coming together as a team, like a group. And then having an experience. And, uh, you know, that takes a lot within itself, knowing what you go through during the experience to even be around someone you don't know. Yes. Or, you know, people you haven't met or someone, you know, like, all right, I trust you, but I'm not really sure right. about it. You know, we all got the message to come together as the group. And we're all seem to be feeling this. Now, from your take, how long have you been dealing with spirituality, let's just say in general, because some people had religion up to a certain point and then broke into this direction. Like, cause you had some interesting stuff. Like you've been <laughs> things you've experienced and gone through me under Aya and, and having a year's worth of it. And then meeting you, I was like, well, she's already way still accelerated past me and telling me all this other stuff. And I'm going, there's people out there that just go through this and straight up. Like there's no ayahuasca, no DMT. It's just you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now, um, I mean, I've spirituality has been a big part of my life literally since I was a kid. Like I can remember, I remembered past lives and knew about them. Like, you know, when I was like four and stuff and some crazy, you know, memories and <laughs> lots of experiences, um, you know, when I was younger, uh, seeing you know the the hudson valley ufo you know oh, okay. situation that really that had must a, have been an impact and then it kind of you know went on from there but then about um i guess four years ago now like something happened and it caused me to start really looking at like the chakra system and and doing you know was it uh, an injury work. or um no actually it was it was it was a specific person. Oh, a person activated. Kind of triggered, triggered okay. like a Kundalini rising, and then everything went from there. Well, that's like a, that's almost like your challenge, and it's and it's accepted. You know, the person that's in your life at that time for that moment. Yeah. And then something occurs, and you know, it's yes. kind of like we had the that magnetism. Agreement, you know, that this was like it wasn't anybody I ever dated or anything like that. It was just a person that I met that just triggered. You know, so um, it got me a lot more into the chakra system sort of thing, and then that led me to. To this sort of work. Absolutely. That's pretty awesome. With Reiki and like Kundalini Reiki. Okay. So like also you were telling me this before you were working on Paula. You're a Reiki master? Uh, Kundalini Reiki. Yeah. And could you just explain that real quick for the listeners? Yeah. I mean, regular Reiki requires like symbols and particular alignments, Um, you know, in order to have the energy channeling. Kundalini Reiki uses, you know, your own um, Kundalini channel as well as calling down from um i guess you know what i would term source energy. so uh, you're sending energy yeah through the universe no, from well, the con- universe like conducting energy from the universe through you yes out to others yes that's <laughs> i almost cursed that's really awesome yeah. Right. Yeah. I well, I know you do it too. Dizzy, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> there was so no, much. No, I feel great. I feel great. <clears throat> they were Just... working in here and um <clears throat> she was working on your shoulder. Yep. Okay, I was standing behind you guys talking, didn't realize what you were doing. I kept talking. I was eating pineapple and stuff. I go, did the room just get 10 degrees hotter? But only right here. And I looked and I saw you doing doing your little thing. And I, I can feel it. And it kind of kept me ju- just like a personable, personal space mm-hmm. so you guys can work. It yeah, kept me yeah, like right you back. there. And I was, I was giggling about it. I was like, oh, sorry, me. <laughs> Look at this. But I felt great. 
Yeah. And I knew that you were getting a dose of it. Oh, I uh, yeah. It, 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 you weren't even standing next to me, Gina. And I saw the I felt the energy swirling around me and then things started to heat up literally around my shoulder and then around the back of my head and now it's like all the energy is just dissipating through my shoulder and I still feel a little lightheaded. And I little, feel it too, the yeah, energy. Yeah, a little woozy. I love it. Yeah. You know, all right. Getting high off of energy is great. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's life, right? So that's pure life energy. People laugh. They'll go, oh, they're playing with energy. All right. So do they. When they take an x-ray or when they, you know, use their internet with their wireless connection. Oh, absolutely. It's energy manipulation. Yeah. Okay. Now, you handed me. I have them in my pocket. And I have the little pyramid right there. These two as well. <laughs> Speaking about energy, crystals. Yes. Oh my God. I, look, I'm touching it. My mouth's watering. Yeah, that's what happened to me. <sighs> it's, um, Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay. I'm just, I'm sensitive just like others, but it's a good uh, vibration. Now, people would say, what are you holding a rock in your hand? You're getting a good vibe from it. Is that what you're doing? That's, I mean, it's. We have to explain it so they know <laughs> exactly. So Gina brought us crystals as a gift, and she bought me beautiful earrings that I'm wearing now. <laughs> and uh, the energy that came off the crystals were insane. These are, this is fantastic. Fant you charge them though with yeah, energy. I charged um, the clear quartz with um, the um, Nima Shiva song mm -hmm. that you like. Yes. And uh, I charged it under there for like a few hours. I cleared, cleansed it and then charged it under there. That's I awesome. usually just put it like right underneath my speaker so it really gets like in the vibration on like a metal plate and just let it, let the music run through it. So I did that for these ones. And then that's um, the rainbow aura flame quartz and Guys, that I charged up with the Kundalini. This Reiki. stuff works. It does. It, it really does. The energy that jumped off of the crystals. Oh, I can't put both of them together. <laughs> yeah, when, well, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I touched them, it was amazing. And I'm not even joking. Like people laugh and they go, oh, that's what, you know, and then I say, here, put this in your hand. Hold this in your hand, right? I have a, my mother gave me a, a like a little rock and it's really smooth and she would rub it. She goes, I used to rub it and say, I love you into it. Frankie, I love you so much. And I'd laugh at her. And then she gave me, she gave it to me and my hand lit up and I felt love. So I tell people here, rub this, touch this, but you got to tell it you love it. And everyone gets this like, oh, right now. Is that pretend? Is it everyone that touch it? Well, you got to be honest because some people have a, a hard head and they hear this and they don't understand it. So I try to explain, look. If scientists, if to break it down, it's energy, sound, vibration, mm -hmm. it's capturing that energy and storing it. And then at, when you need it, you can pull it out because yeah. this thing's biological anyway, and it's meant to work with you. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have to be comic book specific because people will ask and they need to know. They we, need we, to we're know. not hiding any of the information. This is the stuff that really goes on. Okay. 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 So <laughs> crystals. Yay. Yay. I love mine right here. This <laughs> is a pyramid. Guys, it, I have an amethyst pyramid as well. What is this, like two inches? Yeah. Three inches? All right. You hold them in your hand. You could lay down. You could put it even on your head right over your third eye. What I'm learning, and this is what we're going to – one of the things we're going to talk about tonight is th these pyramids are allow you to pierce the veil. That's actually what it's doing. The big ones are accelerators, so you get ex uh, consciousness quicker, like more conscious information, who you were, being able to hold it in the 3D reality too. Like you have to interact with this being of you. And uh, the pyramids are accelerators with that. So the crystals are storing information, holding information, and you're rubbing them and t getting them and putting information into them. And you spoke about this a bunch of times, and, um, and then I spoke to Chris about it. The unlock codes, mm -hmm. they're actual codes you're getting because yeah. information and light is codes. Yes, absolutely. So what do we do? We get these codes, we disseminate them. No, we integrate them. Integrate them. them. You have to integrate them into your aura. Like it becomes part of your energy signature once you integrate those energies. And a lot of this information comes, we could say, from the sun and then from planetary alignment and things in incoming incoming <laughs> there's been a lot of that these days and a lot of people are saying that the event that's going to take place is a, a, a like a solar wave that comes in and what it does is it just kind of changes the way things are from that time on that energy signature is the new 
in things, so to speak, and we'll start working with that. We don't know what that'll cause. Will that bring the light beings? Will that bring uh, just really heavy-duty discernment? Will that bring a breaking of the veil? What do you think is going to happen? Well, I think we're either going to become the light beings or we're not. <laughs> That's going to determine. <laughs> well, we technically um, are the light beings. Yeah, like we have to become who we are. So it, it's going to be integrated. That's what I'm talking about, the light codes. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of people, when they think of light, they tend to, we were just talking about yeah, this. We just, they tend to be talking or thinking strictly about like laser beams of light, like straight lines of light. And lasers. Right. You said this yeah. once to yeah. me. Yeah. Lasers yeah. We carry just information. Had talk. Well, yeah. Right? And, and lasers, lasers, I mean, anything light energy is carrying information. Lasers carrying the information to be able to uh, allow it to cut through, you know, whatever it needs to cut through. So it's, it's having that information, right? The placement of where those light particles need to go. And that's what um, a lot of people wow, fail to remember awesome. yeah, yeah. about the light particles. Because light is not only a laser, it's also a particle. So you don't necessarily have to barrel through everything. Right. You, you can, can slip into those spaces in between and right. light and particles. be subtle. Be Correct. subtle about it. That's awesome. That was a great explanation on it. I'm loving it. So let, now <laughs> let's bring it forward a little bit. What, what brought you to ayahuasca? At, at first or in well, when we just not not me and you what brought you to ayahuasca i i mean i knew you for a little bit we had met like was i the deciding was was i the first time you heard about it um yeah actually. okay okay so that would be the start then yeah i didn't i've never heard of i'm sorry i've never heard of a lot of these um a lot of things it just kind of happens and it's like oh okay then so I you about it after. weren't you weren't like a, a mushrooms lsd um, I did a lot of LSD like back in the day, but okay. I hadn't been doing, um, you, you didn't some... get, did you get the messages you get today? Um, I, I've always gotten, I've always gotten messages and I always knew, um, mm -hmm. from, from a different experience, uh, that I would know when it was kind of time, like when everything was, was happening. So right the now, psychedelic, so. it just maybe enhanced it a little bit and then you had a good ex experience well, with them. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, the Kundalini thing. Because you were like, having it all the time. Yeah. But the Kundalini thing really like sped everything up to a ridiculous degree. And um, when I met you, mine had just happened. I remember telling you, yeah. like, you don't know that I was sitting next to this one. And then this all happened. And I'm going, there's like dragon snakes eating stuff out of me. <laughs> and I'm, they're like, do you want this to happen? And I'm like, yes. It felt, it looked frightening, but it felt, for me, it felt really good. But it's scary. But I didn't care. I was like, no, it feels great. What did yours? I mean, I it, it, it enhanced things that I've always, you know, like things that had always been a part of my life and like my my makeup. So, so it just, it, I, I had to start learning to go along with my gut. Like when it, the day it first happened, I really thought. So your discernment went up. Absolutely. From and your awareness. naturally. Of, of, yeah. Of like everything in the environment around me, I became, you know, more of. But when we talk about awareness, we mean like how you are around people like empaths know this. Uh, they, they understand it. It's difficult to be around different people. Certain yeah. people won't be around you it's and like you'll go, I don't even energy. know why. Right. Now I know we're like light beings. We're blasting people in the face with lights like hi nice to meet you but blasting with light but we're also absorbing like Gina said we're absorbing the energy so absolutely very difficult um to be around certain people now oh, well, I didn't know what it. transmuting of energy was prior to meeting everyone here and working right. alongside ayahuasca see this is what people say to me how did you learn now I learned from everyone as a shaman neo shaman call what you want you don't have to put a label on it it's just Frank Azzle doing it um you learn just to take whatever works and learn from your mistakes. There was so they showed me exactly what to do. And I did it five, six, seven, eight times to fail. And they're like, what's wrong? And I go, it's like I, I textbook could read it in my mind, but I don't understand it. They're like, because you think you could dribble the basketball because you watch the guy dribble the basketball. You know you can do it. You just got to find your rhythm, find your rhythm. And I'm like, wow, this is really taking place here. And that was proof for me. They were discussing with me what was happening. See, until I met Paul is when I started working. I, I, I put all the hard work in in the beginning, and it was just so confusing. And her, you, you cook. 
you 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 know you do, you're a good cook like She's really a delicious good. cook delicious I can attest cook. to that <laughs> that was and, awesome and you watch me doing this and it's a very similar yeah. experience yeah yes it and is. I learned that's where I started going oh I understand I just didn't have any of that around me I didn't have anyone that understood anything that would watch me and look at me and go hey you know maybe not put up that that heat so high yes or, you know, that's yes not when how you're it making works. the tea yes like you have if to you're put trying love into to do it. certain things. Yeah. That's what made me say it's real. My discussions with them on the other side. There's a lot of like, I don't know. Are you crazy, bro? I don't know. Am I crazy? And then you get the information and pull it out here and you're using it and it's working and working. And then they show up for the conversations. You were the only person that knew that any that had any random – my ayahuasca experience sounded like your regular life. Yeah. That's what I was bugging out about. <laughs> well, I, I do a lot of astral travel and astral projection. So, like, I mean, 4D is where I, I was explaining to you. I think when you first do ayahuasca, you, you know, you get propelled into 4D. And the first level of 4D is, like, shadow work. And then you have to kind of graduate from there so that you can deal with the other stuff and be able to practice your right. discernment. Now, but let's you have talk to about- go through 4D. And I was already there at the... I guess the veil. I yeah, always look at the crowd layer. Yeah, when we go into 4D, because people have asked me about this, so we might as well talk about it. You hit a wall. At the end. At the end. Yeah. And this is the, the what does it look like to you? I thought it was a cloud layer. Yeah, just and like And like I opened thick. up my soul star chakra, and we were talking about this the other day, that like it was like a periscope, and I was like, I can sort of see up here that there's like activity going on, but I can't get up there until you... You gave yeah. me that you said, no, you don't have to wait. Just punch right through it. And I was yeah, like, really? I turned myself into an arrow and punch right through the astral plane. And when we come back, we're going to discuss this and so much more because the experiences that we've been having are just so intense. And I want you to hear from her perspective now um, the IA. No hate, no hype. No fear. You are listening to Truth Frequency Radio. We are TFR. Am I a weak or is this a dream? It's a dream. It's a dream. A fantasy where I'd rather be. Rather be. Rather be. So come and talk with me. Come and walk with me. Is this a wake up call from my reality? Have you seen my friends? Have you seen my girl? Be up from this. I'm trapped in this world. Most intense conversations going on on this end. Remember, if you like the music, go to my YouTube page, subscribe, check out uh, Frank Castle Music, and then check out Heist Click Music. And if you like it, you know, listen to it. Enjoy it. Love it. <laughs> love it. I love it. All right, cool. So, all right, let's get back on, on to the show. So, Gina. Yes. Through me, knowing me, we know the story. We met, and then, like a year later, mm-hmm. got in touch again. Yes. Through Facebook. Was it, was that, what, you weren't ready when we first met? Or you were just still, like, I got to feel this out? I mean, it was a it was a combination of the the having to feel it out, having been ill and like undergoing, you know, am I having seizures? Like, what's going on? You know, and and that sort of stuff. And then, um, yeah, like not knowing if you know the situation or the people in it could be trusted because of the circumstances that we met. So it was just right. um, it was a big combination of things. But well, then I felt trust. a pull. Now, oh. that now there totally is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at first, you know, it's always. Guards up. Well, yeah, and especially up. because, you know, like I'm literally putting my life in your hand. So I better, I better trust you, you know, like that's the, you know, the chemical that okay. that's to me is a serious thing. I don't like to, to, we talked about this too. Like, I don't like to, to give up my energetic well, space. Well, it's hard. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. What you're we're putting, doing you're is not your, easy. No. Yeah. You're putting yourself into someone else's hands. It's very like vulnerable. You know, feeling. you're going to be impaired in some way. And you don't want anything happening while you're under. I totally understand that. Now, you had a uh, couple of experiences prior to, what was it, two, a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> what was your, what was that like? 
the first couple of experiences. Yeah. Like, could you sum up? I know it's hard to sum them up. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I guess the first the first experience was, I mean, that was when as soon as I went, it took me, it takes me a lot of, of drink to <laughs> go under. Right. Um, I'm sorry. I finished off your, la- your stuff last night. But no, yeah. that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So the first time was a lot, like a lot of purging and, um, Isis grabbed me right away and said, I got to teach you this. And that was all. Well, we're talking goddess. Isis. Yeah. That's right? all. That was shocking because I didn't have any kind of connection to her or, you know, a relation to her prior to that. So that was a surprise, but that one was mostly purging. And I also just really distinctly remember the whole Russian doll. Do you feeling. remember? Oh, you had the Russian doll. Totally had the Russian doll feeling. Now, you know, the Russian doll. That's the the character within the character within oh, the character. The, within the every character. time you try to get it out, it's the just nesting another character. Doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happened to me. All right, yeah. she she went through that as well, and I was like, "Wow, listen to this. That's a, that's just really interesting. That two people I would know have a similar." Um, yeah, I for, I totally forgot about that until just now. Right. So, those experiences. It, when people say, "Oh, when you drink ayahuasca, it's just your gut kind of mind working things out," I'm like, "Then why is Paula?" seeing nesting dolls why is gina seeing nesting dolls why am i talking to uh the egyptian goddess isis on the regular and why is she talking to her because and why are you not this is the connection that we're making but people yeah well this is what we draw on the show yeah new connections that we're making with people right so well i want the listeners to understand like i had another listener was explaining three times he went under the third time is when he's that's when they showed him, right? They wouldn't show him nothing. Like you can't see yet. You have to clean up. Yeah. You have to walk have to do through the work your first. Fear. Yeah. You have to do all the work first before you get to see all the. Well, good I mean, fun your body's stuff. a container, right? Yeah. So, like, if you've got a whole bunch of like muckety muck, you can't go through the higher realms. You're too muckety. Yeah. You have to up. clean that out. Yeah. So that's where the purge is. I wasn't expecting the the black goo though. That was <laughs> that was shocking. That is. Um. Yeah. Explain when you when you all right. People are afraid of the purge. I don't like to throw up. The purge isn't that bad, right? You can do it very elegantly. <laughs> <I'm>, now, <laughs> or, or like me, crying and yeah. hyperventilating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crying and hyperventilating on my knees. Yeah, yeah, but it's so over pretty breathe. quick. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And you start to feel better. How fast? Well, I mean, I didn't. I didn't purge every time. Like the second time we went under, I didn't, and that was a weird. But like. Um, usually pretty fast and then it's over and it only happens once during the course of, you know, for me, it's like a six to eight hours <laughs> plus thing. So it only happens 46 like a couple hours of times. later. How are you feeling? Oh, she's on top of the ceiling. I can't get it down. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the exorcist in this place. <laughs> I don't want to laugh. But I have to. Gina, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, listen, we have to have the sense of humor because we're doing, all right, we go under and we're talking to the beings. The beings are working with us. And then they're getting – this sounds weird. All right. We agree to decide to work as a crew after working with our beings as a crew. Yeah. Right? And it, we're discerning each one of them. And now they're, we're, we, it's like almost like Team Fearless started here. Yes. And then it became a family. And yes. I went, whoa, what is this? And – we discerned each other up and down. Oh, look at this. I don't know. Can we trust it? Could yeah, we do but it now person? we all have this great connection because when you guys went under, I was I was miles away at the time feeling and experiencing similar things. And I, I wasn't anywhere near you guys. That's quantum entanglement. That's yeah. the start of telepathy. Yeah. <laughs> she is so right. You don't even want to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't even want to know. Um yeah. I, I push that to the test, and they tell me, um, the 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 plants, you want telepathy, the plants, and I'm like, what do I stand in front of them? They're like, you eat them, eat them, that's it. Power ups across the board. Yeah, you go and you eat these things, and you will learn how to do this during the shifting of the consciousness. So, the, the so le- let's get to the experience because I want I want Gina to have enough time to tell her. Tell okay. Story. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So, sum up a little bit of your experiences. Do you speak to any of the beings other than ISIS? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, they speak to me, especially the last time they were doing the whole canopic jar thing. That was pretty crazy. Um, what were they doing with that? Could explain that. I literally felt as though I was being gutted. And I remember saying to you that it was like, it reminded me a lot of Osiris being cut into pieces and then reassembled. And that was when we had the whole, I know I'm skipping kind of all over the place. but it No, no, it's of, okay because um, I want that. They, that's what they want to hear. They're like, who does she talk to? What does she do? We like, had the whole born again thing too. Oh, oh um, yeah. But yeah, you got to go into that. The whole thing too with the whole, remember we were talking. Yeah. About the, the the hieroglyphics actually being like we have to hold poses. They are the unlock. Um, it's kind of that's the signature that you left there, yes. so that you would know yes. like your name, your cartouche, like your positions. And if you hold your positions, that's unlock code. Right. So we're basically leveling up and remembering information that will help raise our consciousnesses and help mm -hmm. us in the actual three D environment. I have to explain this to everyone because they're not just some people are just listening tonight and they're like, the first whoa, time, they're yeah. out there with this. So <laughs> we're getting far out there. Yeah. <laughs> so hieroglyphics and pyramid codes and yeah, but you know about the poses too because you yeah. they taught you a pose, didn't they? Well, he I've, does like the mantis stuff, right? Yes. Now we've discussed this a few times on the show where I do these. Uh, it's almost like you're churning butter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like churning butter, churning butter, and then. Your hands um, like this. I don't know how to explain this. The back of your hands together and the back of your fingers together in front of you mm -hmm. and you twirl them forward. It's like I'm giving my like heart to you. Like, like a, a flower. It's called lotus flower too. coming right. out. And then back to you and then back to churn in the butter kind of. They, they say when you do that, you're b building your energy and that's what the ETs are watching or the interdimensionals, whatever, whatever's around you. They're, they're seeing that and that's, that's the higher form of contact. They're going, okay, this person's ready. So just calling out to them doesn't work. They, well, they need don't to need like, in order to be interplanet, inter, you know, dimensional. They can't use language. Ever. Right, like, right. The, the universal and multi-universal language is telepathy. I mean, animals use telepathy to communicate to each other. You don't see them needing any language to know. They were what. explaining that sometimes they do it. They were like, you. They were saying like, your peacock does this by coming up and spreading its feathers, yeah. and it's trying to communicate. You know, um, so it's a it's a it's a form of dance that's occurring. It's like, hey, look at me. This is what I do. You know, it, it's not going to attack you, and this is how some species will watch you and and you know. So you go through the movements, and it helps you, and then they're watching because everyone's watching. And, All eyes uh, on Earth. <laughs> Absolutely. People don't understand when I tell them they're watching us all the time on all layers and all levels. Now, okay, so when you were under, what was after your – did you purge first, like right away? Which one? This let the, the, the one of your first times. Just, the first time it took me because I was scared. I was right. like, oh, I don't want to – you know, I was like, I really don't want to throw up. And then it was just like, oh. That's what happened to me. I tried yeah. to fight it. What are you going to do? It was horrible. So then, like later on in other experiences, you just go with it, right? Like I'll well, let it out. The second time I transmuted it, and I never purged at all. And so that, that was, that's when you're clean. Well, yeah, I, well, yeah. you've been doing work. And yeah, like, I mean, I think it was a company. Yeah, like I was doing work to get clean, but also like it was. Um, to I get her insides clean, powerful. not not clean, just to get her insides clean. I just yeah. want to be clear. I don't want people to think <laughs> something different. Right, 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 and um. And but then yeah, like the third and the the fourth and like how could you like what do you what do you, what do you experience when you first or it's like hitting you for the first time because you weren't used to nothing like this, right? There's no experience like well, I mean, ayahuasca. Like I said I I, I I astral you know travel and project a lot, so I I think usually you know from someone that's not used to that, that's going to be their first impression of being like out of body because that's what happened but i was i'm used to it so i was right. like oh okay and that's why i was like after a little while i was like i'm so you were you traveling on more. the other side a little bit yeah. yeah you needed a higher dose yeah. which is fine you just they like and you, then i was like the under, shaman God, knows like, because when, you can get there on your own right through four days so doing five yeah days, so needed, doing aya yeah. was just like putting gas in the tank it got, got the me car. through that it end got of you, that it, veil it, it pushed you through yeah well frank you know, Frank's told, telling me what to do. Otherwise, because I was just like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to screw things up. Like, you know, and he was like, nah, just punch right through that. Right. Yeah. Because I hit it a few times and then I go, this is the kindergarten area where they put me when I'm, when they kick me out. And I go, oh no, this is how I learned what the place was. I've been here 50 times, but now this time as I'm coming through, it was a weak batch and I just banged into it like, and I'm like punching it and I'm going, what is this? 
I backed up a little bit and I looked around and I said, I know everyone. He- oh, no, I'm back in kindergarten again. And I said, wait, I'm not supposed to be here. We just started. I'm allowed in. And then they were waiting. I could see them on the other side. Right. And I'm going, hey, hey. And that's when I did the arrow. I made myself like, and then shot at it. And it just tore apart. You know, I talk about this. I, one, of the, one of my other friends, I feel like Terrence McKenna screams in my ear sometimes. And he, got, he says very few things. He says stuff like, go further. Why are you not going deeper? Why are you scared to not go further? And I go, you know what? You're right. It's not for as much as it is the ayahuasca. At one point, it becomes your consciousness and how and how your mental strong is. So because you're integrating it, the experience. Exactly. So it's not just her. She's giving you the platform. Yeah. You know, she does a ton. There's a ton of things she's doing. All right. What else? What else happened? Well, the first I was just remembering, like the first time I went under, I went under myself. You didn't. It wasn't, we didn't share that right, right. Af- every subsequent time since then. Well, that was your first time. So yeah. you had to go through your own yeah. door. Right. Yeah. But that's what the shaman does. I just hold space. You walk through it. Oh, you walk through and then the experience starts yeah. happening on another level. Yeah. All right. Now let's skip ahead a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, what's it like knowing you're going to be part of a team that's going to drink ayahuasca <laughs> and go under it's and so try to. It's because I'm not alone in the other world <laughs> anymore. <laughs> So it's nice. It's a really, it makes me happy. And, you know, like working out, you know, obviously trust issues when you're dealing with a group and you're used to being able to, de- you know, working alone and having like strong personalities trying to, right. you know, come together for a common goal. And, but that's part of the lesson too, you know, so it's all. So it's a group of people coming yeah. together for a common goal in spirituality. So we're not just solo digging it because we that's what we're doing on our own. Yeah. Right. And then. Okay. And then that like it comes into the play where like you can't just be like a child of light forever. Like at some point you have to say, okay, like I've grown up a bit. I've matured. I understand what to do. There's so much more than that. that, When they tell you you you're the light, that's like baby steps. Yeah. Yeah. Now now you have to get your It's always about responsible use of power. And the more. You have to put in the work now. Yeah. The work has to come before you can even get to that. Like that's, you know, you have to do, that's what we were talking about, the eclipse too. Like you have to do the inner work. So you're vibrating at a specific frequency so you can get the incoming codes. Yes. Because if you're not at that frequency, they just pass right by you. You're not receiving any of the messages. You're right. So you have to maintain that. Well, I like to show people on the show. I tell them to ground themselves. That's another thing you taught me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You ground (laughs) yourself and then you can lift off. (laughs) Be- and the message won't come through distorted. Yeah. And that's basically what we're talking about. It's like you lock that's down. That's super helpful now. Yeah, when we say we lock down, that's what we're talking about. We're grounding and then we're launching off and any incoming energies, we will be vibrating at yes. a capable rate to transmute or get the information and use it for whatever, disseminate it when I mean passing it through the crowd of us because you'll get information and I'll get information and we'll go just be a, it'll be a round robin of ridiculousness because yeah. we'll just talk for hours. Right. Because right. we have to put t- together the pieces. We're each getting snippets on a specific and re- the puzzle, radio station. Yes. <laughs> and the puzzle is multidimensional. Yes. People bug out with that one. I'm like, dude, it's coming in from everywhere. Like everything and it takes more than one person to do this. Like we do the work for ourselves and then we push through to do these things. Yeah. Okay. So now you're, you, you meet, you can, you meet with me, meet my, with our buddy, mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Z, <laughs> <Hey>. and, uh, <laughs> which is weird now that we're, we're all meeting to do the work like this. Now me and Mr. Z do this all the time, right? We go way back with this and now we're adding more to the group. What was that like? I mean, again, it's, you know what we're going to do. Yeah, like, it was a, kind of it's kind of tricky, too, you know, because like it's taken time for me to, to trust you. And Paul is just awesome, you know, oh, but like, you. you know, when you're going that deep again, you become somewhat vulnerable, you know, unless you're setting stuff up ahead of time. Absolutely. And, um, otherwise, you know, well, like, as a, it's response. a trust exercise, always. Absolutely. Oh, definitely. But it's it was so nice. Exercise. It's again, it's Absolutely. so nice and so relieving to me, you know, to be like, okay, fine, good. There's like other people doing this. And it's not just me, you know, over here by myself. So you without Aya, of course. Absolutely, absolutely. But Aya, what it does is it just clears you out. Yeah. And it facilitates a faster a faster fuel. Yeah. So that's why I tell people you can sit on the side of the mountain for thirty years and get the God feeling for like a half a second or something. Or you could drink Aya 
or smoke DMT and just blow your socks off. Do it now. And then it's – my singer said it best. It was 40 years of AA in the first hour. Right. And then I never drank again. But what casts a shadow? Darkness. <laughs> no. Light does. Yeah, light casts the light shadow. Light shining by behind oh, you oh, actually okay. casts a shadow. So if people aren't willing to do their own shadow work, like here in 3D, right. there's oh, no absolutely. way they can ever. Absolutely. Like, this is what we mean by putting the in the work. Yeah. You have to go and <clears throat> spiritually, I guess, check yourself, like yeah. a self-review. It, ayahuasca is like a super self-review. DMT is just a blast off, but you use it as a tool. You don't use it as, ha, ha, I want to go see elves. We don't see... I'll be honest. When I, if I'm seeing the elves, I'm not. You're not I, in the right place. I'm no, not, not personally right place. No. doing it right. I'm like, oh, I'm over here. Because you're not doing it for entertainment. Yeah, we're not. This is an entertainment. There's nothing and, ooh, entertaining the about other side this. Like, in the other dimension. Nah, I, I'm. I wake up every time, and I'm excited because I'm. I got you guys, and you know. Oh yeah, the whole, the whole, the whole team. I mean, I'm still frightened to do ayahuasca or at any time. Because it's, oh, wow. Because you have to have a healthy fear. Yes, it's and a respect. healthy fear. That's why the show is fearless. Well, you're dying, We're too. We're on the road. You're dying and being reborn. Reborn. Like, each yes. time. Mm -hmm. so, so even the purging, I felt very much like it was like a almost like a birthing process. It's part of the birthing process of the new version of you. So yes, you, and the two of you specifically had that same experience together. Yeah. So what so was... It was very necessary. What was... um. Like first going into it, what was does does Aya come out and speak to you? How did it how did it hit you? No, I, to me it's always it was like sort of groups around the very first. I told you the very first. I mean the very first thing is is Isis. She comes and it's it's always like like groups around. Um, which is I there, guess is, is there a lot of Egyptian stuff and pyramids? Yeah. Yeah, because, absolutely. Right. I mean, the Canopic jars and, and that time that we, the second time when we went under and we ended I up talked in on the show and didn't court say and like yes. all of the sun discs and like that's the what whole... I was just gonna say. Yeah. We, I did a show and I couldn't say that it was you, as this is and that I went through being at the steps of the pyramid. Yeah. out in the courtyard. Yes. and it was sunny and I'm like, and this beautiful woman came down the steps and she touched my head and said it'll be all right. And I'm like, whoa, and I saw you and I'm going whoa. Then I wake up and I'm shooting past the pyramids on some kind of device, mm -hmm. but I'm flying through the air right. and they're activated and I see the energy going up. And I'm because like, we what? were we were checked right there. That was a checkpoint. Yes. If we were not like where we needed to be, you don't you're not on. getting in. No. And this is why we call it putting in work. You gotta do a little bit more than you think. If you're if you're saying, nah, I'm good. That's when you better check yourself. Yeah, that's your ego. You're not good. Yeah, you're not good. You're <laughs> There's so, always more you're work so to do. horrible. <laughs> but one one thing I find funny as you start going in, like when we started going in together, like on day two, it was like I wasn't bugging out. We no. were sitting in the room, <laughs> wide awake, looking at each other. I was telling you what was in the room. There was the girl in the room. Yeah. You were telling me what was happening to you, and we were going back. That was going on for two hours. Before we decided to take, take a, more, <laughs> take more. But they were telling me you're not going down this time. Right now, you're yeah, gonna that learn. Was, that was the like stalwart. Like you they had to like, dig now in, you and there learn. was a, to me there was like a huge storm, and it was just like no, you have to stand fast. Like there's this crazy storm, and you cannot. You have to keep your put your position, and as long as you know, I did because you have to be able to withstand some crazy, crazy storms of stuff. Um, in energy, order to, yeah, energy, and energy storms in order to be able to withstand what's incoming. This was what they were teaching me with the bubble. It was a grounding test. Thank you, Frank. Yes, I was to sit down. They wouldn't let me pass out, and I was doing. I talked about this last episode with a bubble would, mm -hmm. would like form around me. It was my aura, and it would turn on, and all the incoming energies, which is a storm of energies, stopped blasting me, and they were bouncing off the bubble. And it's I electrical could, impulses, and really? I started to be able to think clearly. Right. And I go, oh, this is what they mean. Keep this thing on all the time. Yes. And they yes. said, now keep it on. And I was trying. And then keeping it on was okay. It was easy. It was doing the next thing while keeping it on. That was hard. And yeah. I kept fainting trying it. And remember, you talk about passing out yeah. sometimes or short fainting. circuits, short, short circuiting. circuiting. You can't, it, unless, you are, unless your vessel is clear and like oh, everything is able to, to withstand those high frequencies. It's, I used to get popped out of my body. 
<laughs> that was scary as hell. Well, you do you feel that Aya has has like rewired that part? I, well, I mean, I yeah, I think it's definitely helped. But also, again, like your you know your and your guidance are like punch through and also ground. Well, we all have a that, piece of the puzzle. Yeah, That's what it like is. I really needed, you know, I needed to learn how to, to be able to ground in order to withstand those energies. Right. And, and I got that while yeah. flying and then you fly. Yeah. I and fly I need regular. to learn how to just fly <laughs> and let go, but be grounded and do the same thing. Feel like, look, just be just attached to this beautiful planet earth, right to the center of the earth. Let it fill you with the energy and now do whatever you want. Because then nothing can stop you. Right. It's not like you're going out and just trying to do horrible things. You're going to do anything yeah. you want. You'll be able to manifest. You'll be able to talk to beings. You'll be able to tell if they're real, they're not real. You'll have a high discernment. That was tested the first day because it was like that was a memory. I told you I felt really locked and loaded on afterwards. It was just like, you know, because a lot of the times when you're going through, you know, 4D, especially upper 4D, what you're dealing with is these false light beings and they can, you know, they're shapeshifters. So they can appear as as anything and it might seem like it's friendly or even like it's someone that, you know, or whatever. And it, it really isn't. So that's when, you know, your your discernment compass needs right. to be so well calibrated because it's that slight nuance because they're copying us. Right, yeah. like they're copying us, but they can't copy the energy the signature AI exactly. And so the it's de demonic. They're they're copying the good guys, kind of the good light beings, and they're tricking people. Yeah, that's why there's the archons, the archangels, right there, because the AI has got its own version but of not them. Not all of them, because then it gets again more yeah, Russian doll. Because there's the real ones, and then there's the replicas. Because I've seen the two, that's the why I've questioned it. <laughs> but then I just realized they just make replicas and. But they are and, lacking uh, that spark, and that's where your discernment has to be. Now, at I peak. remember I wrote this down. Okay. I, I asked because there was you, me, and Mr. Z, who just hit me up right now. <laughs> I'm churning that butter, Mr. Z. But um, I asked telepathy and the eclipse, and you need to make us uh, the connection because the whole I idea of this is making the connection strong with your team. And I was like, we want to bring in our friends, remember? Mm -hmm. And you were like, bring ETs into the room. And I'm like, no, not in the room, like a space in our consciousness. They told me, because I said no so many times, <laughs> and then I asked my questions. They were like, nope, nope, and absolutely not. And then they booted me out. What did they say to See, you? I had they the said, you need to do more work. I had the opposite. Like, they were trying to get me to do stuff, and I was saying nope. Yeah, it was a big no I was like, fest. no, 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 you can't. You need, because they need our consent. That's yes. right. But you, they also need us to submit to the ayahuasca experience for it to fully work. Correct. But who the fuck wants to integrate with a – like for me, there was that moment with the robot, the living thing, and it grabbed <laughs> me. And I, I went, no, 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 God, no. And they were like, what the – what's wrong yeah, what's with you? What's wrong with you? That's Just breathe. you. I found out later on. They were like, dude, that was you. And I went, oh, bring him back. And they were like, no. No. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Another time maybe, but not now. Yeah, but the next day it was a completely different story. So but That was pure insanity. Yeah. It was learning – and then it was, hey, let's turn this up a notch and just see what happens. I felt them daring me, though. Like, you drink more, but then there was no more. I'm so sorry. I said, no, it's cool, because <laughs> I, I knew that last bit was going to be, like, like, really strong. And then I was like, hmm, should I, shouldn't I? And then I smoked, and I blasted off in eight directions at once, and I was reborn. Yeah. I talked about this, yeah, about being in the, the blue sack and then being birthed out with the light being... That was an interesting experience. That's the second time that I had that kind of experience. But they say that being is coming down in density. I, I still am discerning that being, being, by the way. <laughs> That's why I was so happy, too, that I don't want to merge them. with anything except, uh, like, Horace, if I'm going to do that. Well, listen, thanks for being on the show. Yes, I, <laughs> that, I know it goes so fast. Um, you're so happy that you came ridiculous. on. ridiculous. No, I love you guys so much. Stick around for Chris and Sheree. They're up next with Beyond the Veil. And remember, we are your protection from, from deception. deception. We love you so much. Don't forget, heist click, H-E-I-S-T-C-L-I-C-K, like beans, star seeds.